On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I want to think about the renewal of the United Methodist Church beyond the that we've been going through lately. Uh, nobody likes it. It's been very hard. It's been very tough for me. And honestly, I think people on all sides are ready to just say, okay, we've uh, come to some kind of, uh, we're coming to some kind of conclusion of these uh, conflicts that we have had, and we're ready to move on as Christians. And uh, I want to give uh, a few thoughts here and in a few more of these talks about uh, the renewal of the United Methodist Church beyond the stuff that we've been going through. I'm Ted Campbell. I teach Methodist stuff here at Perkins School of Theology, Southern Methodist University. Uh, and I ha will tell you, it's been a very, very tough time for me. And so it's a time we need to be remembered. What is the rock uh, on which we stand? What is the solid rock? And uh, I want to give some thoughts along those lines. Honest to goodness, very tough for me. I told a friend a long time ago that I, I had this dream about watching an airplane trying to take off and it just can't um, get altitude and finally, and, and I never see the thing fall and crash or anything. It's just, and he said, well, you know, he says, sometimes if you, if you have a dream about a, a, a vehicle, it's really about your life. And I said, I don't think so. I think it's about my church. And I've, I've had to play the role of being kind of Jeremiah to the United Methodist Church. I mean, I know there are people who are Isaiah and they say, trust in God. God is going to deliver Jerusalem. It's going to be great. Just have courage and patience. And I'm the one who says, see this clay pot smash. That's what God is going to do to Israel and the United Methodist Church and so forth. I've just sung that song for so long. I'm tired of it myself. I thought maybe I would leave. I would just find some other church. And I talk to the folks in the Orthodox Catholic Church in America, and they said, sure. And they have received me as an ecumenical partner and recognized me as a priest, and I helped start a little tiny congregation here in Dallas just before COVID and crash. That all went down uh, with COVID. I thought, maybe finally I'll just become an Anglican because I love Anglicanism and Episcopalians and Anglicans in general, just really cool people. Uh, so I went and talked to the Anglicans and they said, you're a Methodist. And I said, no, 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 no. Um, uh, you know, I love Anglicanism deeply. I can say the whole thing. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent ye of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. So on and so forth. And they said, you're a Methodist. And I said, no, no, no. Look, I make a sign of the cross. And they said, you made it the wrong direction. I said, yeah, I know, because I had a Greek. No, they said, you're a Methodist. I said, Methodists don't make a sign of the cross. They said, you're faking it. You're just, you're not, you're really, you're really a Methodist. And, and so I, I, I thought about this and I thought, maybe I should go back to the OCCA folks and say, look, I'd like to start a congregation of the Orthodox Catholic Church of America here in Dallas. And it's going to be, get this, the St. Susanna Wesley Orthodox Catholic Church. What do you think about that? And they said, you're a Methodist. Okay, get it. So I'm coming to the realization, I'm probably going to be a United Methodist when I grow up. And I'm okay with that. I'm just, I'm sort of thinking a little more positively, more Isaiah-like these days than uh, Jeremiah-like. So I want to talk about a renewed United Methodist Church beyond the stuff that we've been going through. And I thought about that wonderful old Baptist hymn by... Um, who is it? It's Edward Mote, an English Baptist who wrote this in 1834. And we voted it into just about every Methodist hymnal since the late 1800s. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And in verse 2, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. I have thought about this over and over and over again. My anchor holds within the veil. Guess where that comes from? It's from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, which hope 
we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. An anchor of the soul that entereth into that within the veil, where the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. My anchor holds within the veil. Now, one of the things that Edward Moat probably didn't think about, uh, because it's more of a modern historical perspective, but that was that the book of Hebrews, scholars believe today, was written in a period when Judaism was having a tough time with Roman uh, occupiers. And there was a point at which Romans had made the temple off limits to Jews and then eventually destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. And that meant they couldn't offer the atoning sacrifice anymore. Now, now most people could not enter the Holy of Holies and participate in the sacrifices. They had to be outside of it. But, but what Edward Mote is singing about and what the book of Hebrews is telling is that Christ has ascended into heaven and Christ has gone into the Holy of Holies, not in an earthly temple, but in an heavenly temple. And his self-offering, his giving of himself is the ground of our hope. It's the, the reason why we can have it, not because of something we do or we are, or even because of our church. It's because we trust in Christ and in Christ's holy sacrifice. A wonderful bishop of the early church, the bishop patriarch of Alexandria, Athanasius, wrote, Christ became human in order that humans might become divine. We gotta say, that's the ground of our hope. If we have any hope at all as a church, it's Christ that is at the center of that hope. And we have to realize, I think, what it is that God wants from us. What God wants from us, according to the Bible, is you shall love the Lord your God with one hour of your time every Sunday and 10% of your gross monthly income. How about that? That make a great deal for you? Well, listen, God is a lover. And what a lover wants is the beloved. And a lover wants the whole thing. If you're in love with someone and they say, Great, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you one hour of my time every Sunday morning and I'll throw in 10% of my gross monthly income. What do you think about that? Well, I'd walk away or run away because if you're in love, you want the whole thing. God is in love with you and God wants what God always wants. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength, the whole thing. Our salvation in Christ is completely free. There is nothing we can do to earn it. I, there's nothing we can possibly do to merit Christ's salvation. And in the end, it calls for everything. But Christ has entered into the veil and our anchor is fixed on that, Christ's atoning sacrifice. If we have any hope, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We'll say more, but I want to leave you with the words of this great hymn.